Hi, fashionistas. Welcome to the first lecture series on vintage Roxy doll, where we will focus on the establishment of American fashion. This is part two of three parts in the series. Yes, we can. Post World War II American fashion, including Tina Lesnar, Edith Head, and Norman Norell. At the onset of World War II, American women lost access to European couture fashion, particularly during the Nazi occupation of Paris. Many iconic designers during this time closed their door, and this included Madame Gris and Balenciaga, while others, like Mainbanger, Malmieu, and Scaparelli, fled to London, New York, and even Hollywood. This provided a unique opportunity for budding American designers to enjoy the spotlight of fashion in their own country. Milliner Lily Dachet became a mainstream designer while Edith Head dispersed fashion advice to the stars as well as to the American public. For the first time, American designers' names could be found on the tags of the clothing that they created. Claire McArdle, throughout World War II, used inventive design to problem solve for the needs of the American woman. She, with other designers like Tina Lesner, Paula Treger, and Norman Norell, rose to the occasion to define the look of American fashion, including clean lines, making comfort a priority, but most importantly, addressing the needs of American women. The next generation of American designers, including Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren, and Donna Karen, would continue this tradition. Philadelphia-born Tina Lesner owned a boutique in Honolulu, selling her own creations. It was during a buying trip to New York that she showed one of her designs of a play suit to Saks Fifth Avenue, who made a large order of the design. Most notably known for her beachwear during World War II, she went on to help establish sportswear as one of the most important segments of American fashion, as she continued to create practical and comfortable resort wear throughout her career. Since the image of the Gibson girl in the Edwardian era, American women became synonymous with athleticism. Lesnar perpetuated the athletic American woman in her bathing suit designs that were functional for an active day at the beach. In 1945, Lesnar won the Cody Award for her originality in the design of play clothes. Lesnar's advertisements reflected an American society that was more knowledgeable about the world due to the various areas of conflict, including the Pacific theater throughout World War II. As you can see here, Comfort in Lesnar's collections became a focal point. This is Lesnar's version of the proper look of the 1950s. Here you can see the ease and comfort that becomes synonymous with American sportswear. Actress Mae West famously told Edith Head as she prepared for the movie She Done Him Wrong, Quote, my dress must be loose enough to prove that I'm a lady and tight enough to show that I'm a woman, end quote. Edith Head was a problem solver, using fashion as her solution. She knew how to downplay flaws while highlighting a star's best attributes. Quickly, American women mimicked her on-screen fashions in their own closets and sought out her fashion advice through newspaper articles and the development of a line of patterns. Head started her career as assistant to Travis Banton at Paramount Studios, where she later held the position of head costume designer. Throughout her career, Head would design for other studios, including MGM, Columbia, 20th Century Fox, and Warner Brothers. And in the late 1960s, she moved to Universal Film. Throughout her career, Head designed clothing for more than a thousand films.
Alfred Hitchcock, known for his affinity for blondes, cast Grace Kelly, starring in one of the early movies using VistaVision, in addition to Eastman Kodak Color Film. This movie featured one of the largest Hollywood sets, which recreated Greenwich Village. The evening gown Kelly wears to an award ceremony in the film solidifies the drama of black and white dressing, making it a staple of American design. Alfred Hitchcock valued Edith Head's work, and in his movie, The Man Who Knew Too Much, Head created the first of her classic gray suits for a Hitchcock heroine. Notice the mainstream interpretation of the suit reflecting the cinder, slender silhouette popular with working women during the 1950s. Head would reprise this idea in several Hitchcock movies, most notably in Vertigo, where the suit featured in the plot. Just as the gray flannel suit seemed to be the most utilitarian outfit for a man's wardrobe, it also became a staple for women throughout the 1950s. American women became enamored with copying Edith Head's costume selections for many of her movies. It was not just through the movies that Edith developed a relationship with the American public. Throughout her career, she wrote fashion advice columns and translated her most practical designs to patterns for advanced so that American women could mimic the styles they saw on the screen by sewing their own versions. This is what endeared head to American women everywhere. Norman Norrell worked for Hattie Carnegie for 12 years before opening his own label called the Trina Norrell with partner Anthony Trina. During World War II, his dresses featured a slim waistline with minimal clean lines. Following World War II, Norrell continued to offer his customers minimalist designs, but also heightened the elegance of his creations. Norrell could create the most stunning cocktail dresses from silk crepe de chine as easily as he could wool or cotton. He understood how a practical fabric would either drape or enhance the fullness of a circle skirt in his designs. American women adored his easy to wear cocktail dresses that were always appropriate without being flashy or revealing. While always at the height of elegance, Norrell's designs ensured the wearer would be comfortable and confident in her clothing. Norrell's slip dress, as seen here in the center, has a clear influence on Halston's disco era version seen on the far right a decade later. More than any other designer, Norell could design clothing that defined the new American classic through simplified silhouettes with an emphasis on appropriateness for day and evening. Norell's designs always included an air of prim and proper as seen here with Jackie Kennedy wearing one of Norell's most well-known silhouettes featuring a bateau neckline and gathered dirndl skirt. Norrell started teaching at Parsons School of Design in 1943, and he continued to do so until his death in 1972. As you can see, the legacy of the American sportswear designer continues as many of the traditions from the World War II era are updated by American designers of the 1970s and 80s even through today. We'll see this play out in part three of the series, Yes We Can. See you soon.